Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Aswini Kumar from International School of Business and Media, Pune. Today, we are going to talk on module Male Gaze under the paper Women, Media and Film Studies. This chapter is designed to introduce to you the meaning, definition and concept of male gaze and the way it operates in cinema and consequently society. It deals with the most popular theme of the cinema and the men-women relationship as portrayed by society. The study of the various cinema, both Indian and Western, helps us to understand the dynamics of the concept of male gaze. Gaze is very dynamic phenomenon, but its presentation in cinema has led to development of pertinent theories within the feminist genre. After studying this unit, you should be able to define male gaze, explain its relevance in a plot, identify the concept and typology of a male gaze, identify, compare and contrast this concept used in Indian cinema and Western cinema, discuss the impact of male gaze in understanding the stereotypical role played by men and women in cinema and society, and at last, explain how the phenomenon is applied in contemporary cinema. The term male gaze was introduced as a part of film theory in the past. It has been applied also to critic advertisements, television programs and the fine arts. Gaze means to look into intently. According to Jacques Lacan, it comes with the awareness that one can be viewed. On the other hand, according to Jonathan Schroeder, the key feature of the gaze is that the object that is gaze at it not aware of the viewer. Depending on this context, the gaze has been described in a number of ways, ranging from verism to exhibitionism. According to Daniel Candler, there are several important types of gaze when the context is the graphic art. The common ones are as follows. The spectator's gaze. Gaze of the viewer on the person, object, animal depicted in the graphic art. Intradigatic gaze. Gaze of the depicted person at another within the context of the text or graphic art. Direct address to the viewer or extradigatic gaze. Gaze of the depicted person, animal looking out of the frame as if to the viewer. The look of the camera. This is rather the look of the director or photographer. In the context to the viewer, text relation of looking, Gunther Kress and Dio Van Leeuwen make basic distinction between an offer and a demand. An indirect address represents an offer in which the viewer is an invisible onlooker and the depicted person is the object of the look. Here, those depicted either do not know what they are being looked at or act as if they do not know or act as if they do not know. A gaze of direct address which represents a demand for the viewer to enter into a social relationship with the depicted person, with the type of relationship indicated by a facial expression, for example, the television news readers and in advertisements. Chris Gunther and Theo Van Leeuwen, in reading images, the grammar of visual design, concept of male gaze. According to Von Isamel Fall, in the book, the dominance of the male gaze in Hollywood films, patriarchal Hollywood images of women at the turn of the millennium. The way in which media systems reflect our social environment and specifically how they represent and disseminate gender role models and have a lasting effect on the construction of identity is of long lasting interest, both in gender studies and in the literary and the visual arts. In order to examine in particular the representation of women in the visual art of popular cinema, 
the dominance of the male gaze in hollywood films thus focuses on the image of women in mainstream hollywood films although media specifically television and films are often considered to act largely as a social mirror films in fact often distort social reality and continue to reflect traditional stereotypical gender constructions in fact these traditional gender images are not simply mirrors of real life but also ideological signifiers consequently this time lag also manifest in filmic representation of gender roles means for the women's movement that feminists have hardly been able to enact new images of women outside the patriarchal context of popular films or change female stereotypes and incorporate feminist through into the mainstream films thus mainstream films do not propagate an image of emancipated women quite the reverse women are subordinate objects of the male gaze the term male gaze is linked deeply with the representations in the cinema whenever and wherever women are portrayed in cinema it automatically links the space given to a female character with the space occupied and used by male characters in the film in all eventualities films are constructs the canvas of which is designed by the directors giving each character a personality and a role which occupies space on the canvas each such character then interacts with each other as sequence unfold to reveal the plot this encoding by the director is then decoded and interpreted by the audience editing plays a very important role as placement of shots bring out the altered meaning as designed by the director to be conceived by the audience the term male gaze refers to visual analysis of a female by a male according to Jonathan Schroeder the gaze implies more than to look at it signifies a psychological relationship of power in which the gazer is superior to the object of the gaze in terms of cinema the stories played out on the screen are the men's their conflicts their dreams their aspiration their tragedies their revenge their desires and their heroism the women exist only in relation to the men as their mothers their wives and especially their lovers it is hard to find even one story revolving around a single unattached woman the first such mention had come from laura mulvey's most referred work on male gaze where she emphasized that women stand in patriarchal culture as signifier for the male other she went on to elaborate that cinema portrays the image of women from the perspective of the men making her the passive and him as active the women displayed functioned on two levels first as erotic object for the characters within the story second as erotic object for the spectator within the auditorium in the context of female male relation that surround the term male gaze one can differentiate the kinds of gazes in the following ways the gaze of the male character towards the female character and the gaze of the female character towards the male character within the narrative the male gaze is always more predominant and importantly placed in the films the moment the male first sees the woman is very well foregrounded through the use of action dialogue background music etc the gaze of the audience towards the characters the reverse that is the gaze of the characters towards the audience rarely ever exists since that or drain the carefully constructed authenticity of the screen story 
men and women have different responses and reactions to the stories being played out on the screen at the same time. The male psychic dominates the female on even in viewers who may experience different reactions to the same stimulus say a rape scene. Although in reality considering that Petraki is so well entrenched even in a woman's psyche, these differences may be tangential. Most films are made by men for a predominantly made audience and to reflect on the relationship of the way men look at women and resulting power dynamics in society. According to Mulvey's narrative film is made for the pleasure of male spectators alone who seeks to control and indirectly poses the female figure through narratistic identification with the main male protagonist who controls the gaze and the events on the screen thus giving the male spectator a reassuring sense of omnipotence. Historical background of the term Laura Mulways coined the term male gaze in 1975. In her article, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema earned her fame in feminist literature. She believed that films are treated such that the female audience have to view characters from the perspective of a heterosexual male. This relegates women to the status of objects. Therefore, the female viewer has to experience the narrative secondarily by identification with the male, whereas the male characters are protagonists and drive the narrative forward. The female character as shown in commercial art or in documentary were objectified by cameras. Masculine vision is almost invariably characterized as patriarchal, ideological and fell centric. Conclusively, male gaze in the context of women and cinema pervades all such instances where the female body is looked at by the maleness of the viewer's gaze. It fixes the viewers in the viewing place and determines the depicted woman strictly as the object of his gaze. In Mulvey's article, the reference of Bud Bidocher holds well. It quotes, What counts is what the heroine provokes or rather what she represents. She is the one or rather the love or fear she inspires in the hero or else the concern he feels for her who makes him act the way he does. In herself, the woman has not the slightest importance. Identified as scopophilia, as circumstances in which looking at it is a source of pleasure, just as in the verse formation there is pleasure in being looked at. His examples center on the voluptuous activities of children. They are elusive to see and make sure of the private and the forbidden. At the extreme, Freud said that such tendencies could fixate around perversion, producing obsessive wares and peeing toms, whose only sexual satisfaction comes from watching and objectifying others. The gaze also provides another kind of pleasure, the voluptuous one. The viewing conditions, dark, anonymous, the brilliance and the rapidly changing light patterns on the screen and the narrative norms of constructing verisimilitude of never returning the gaze of the audience all add in giving the spectator an illusion of looking into a private world. Basically, male gaze has been differentiated into the following three typologies. First, how do men look at women? How do women look at themselves? Third, how do women look at other women? 
many cultural constructions, societal norms, fantasies and historical movements are conveyed and understood through films. So the way in which they represent women is of the utmost importance. Radio, television, film and the other product of media culture provide materials out of which we forget our very identities, our sense of selfhood, our notion of what it means to be male or female, said critical theorist Douglas Kellner in 2007. Therefore, cinema largely impacts our concept of self-identity. These impressions are so deep and everlasting that concisely or unconcisely we perform our life activities based on them. Portrayed in Cinema Many cultural construction, societal norms, fantasies, historical movements are conveyed and understood through films. Cinema provide materials out of which we forge our very identities, our sense of selfhood, our notion of what it means to be male or female. Cinema largely impacts our concept of self-identity as gender, role, identification from early childhood. Portrayal in Western Cinema Much of the Hollywood cinema has the basic tenets of the male supremacy. A storyline fended by the ornamentally decorated curvaceous female. Female characters designed to serve the multitude of male viewers' fantasy. The Avatar, The Dark Knight Rises, The Twilight Saga, and in particular, Rowan Joffe directed Before I Go to Sleep. Portrayal in advertisements consider the ads for beer, where the body of the woman is linked to the bottle, which is likened to again the polos. This is not merely a function of looking but also the manner of representation. As portrayed in Indian cinema, the Indian commercial cinema is a classic example of over-magnified male dominance in everything from the storyline to the presentation. Woman who has been violated is compelled to marry her assaulter. The concept of woman as property, a possession which needs to be passed on unsued from one's honor to the other. She must observe the Karvachad fast religiously even if he is a glanderer. The above portray obsession of the Bollywood with male dominated cinematic plots. Indian cinema. The male gaze is especially evident in the song and dance number which are pertinent for the publicity and the selling of a film. The natural counters of the bodies of the actresses are distorted with push-up bras, breast and or buttock padding. The women are frequently sought either from a low angle or from a high angle to show the cleavages. Interestingly, Bollywood has also produced films like Earth, Mrityu Dand, Aastha, Paroma, which make a strong statement about women's perception. Portrayal in these feministic fervor films again just opposes the presentation style in facing her portrayal through a men's perception about her. Such deep rooted is this linkage that in all reality the cinema reflects a woman as nothing but her image. To counter the male gaze, contemporary movies like Kahani, The Lunchbox, Mr. and Mrs. Iyer all go a long way in creating a dent countering the male gaze. A motion picture like Stepmom in 1988 with a plot written around the protagonist Julia Roberts beautifully represents the man-woman relationship as well as the woman-woman counter exchange without the overshadow of male dominating gaze. Kahani is another powerful script wherein the female protagonist 
occupies all the male dominated domains. To counter the male gaze remains largely in the naturalistic treatment of the plot and the choice and the design of the director. Serials, soaps, aired during afternoon have plots showing a typical storyline of the female trying to control the men. They decide if they want to snatch the hero from the clutches of another woman and thereby challenge the very essence of male dominance. The female characters cannot avoid being looked at. They can decide whether or not to accept and internalize the gaze. Is female gaze the answer? Imagine an animation where the long lashes female gives the sign of falling in love depicted by the heartbeat emanating out of her head instead of the male in the scene. There have been instances where female leads have given the sign of appreciation after meeting the hero or trying to woo him. Madhuri Dixit in Tejab was one such heroine, but all such instances have been few and sporadic and generally these involve instances where the male happens to be interested in another female. Madhuri and Karisma in Dil to Pagal Hai or Rani Mukherjee and Kajol in Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. Otherwise, any incident where a female takes the lead to woo a male is generally considered comical like Lashmi Kant Verde in Maine Pyar Kiya with Gulabdia or Huma Khan. Initiation of a proposal is most unlikely done by the female lead because the decision making and wooing is traditionally rested in the hands of men. In Hollywood releases Gone Girl in 2014 by David Fincher and before I Go to Sleep in 2014 by Rob and Joffe are two such movies that revolve around the life of the female protagonist who acts and is an active participant in what happens in the plot. Despite this, the concept of male gaze is completely eliminated as the directors themselves have not used this ploy. Therefore, the counting of male gaze can come either through reversing the trend and applying the concept of female gaze or through a conscious effort of removing such styles of portrayal. Male nudity. Nudity is highly culturally relevant term. It differs as people view nudity depending on their level of inhibition, cultural background and upbringing as well as on context. Media is obsessed with the projection of female nudity and it still remains a sensitive cultural issue. The concept of exposure and inhibitions is so deeply linked to culture, religion and reason that filming it has different meaning in the different context. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. Male gaze is the phenomena of how portrayal of female in media, particularly in cinema is done with the perspective of a male in the audience. This portrayal impacts the psyche of the audience and notion of gender, role playing and orientation towards self. This happens as cinematic impact lasts longer and deeper than what one realizes. This worldwide phenomena can be reined by a conscious effort of the directors themselves and through plots that cater to men-women relations subjectively and not in a biased manner. Thank you.